Steve Dotto here. I want to welcome you to the next installment in our journey towards 100,000 subscribers. Today, I thought I'd walk you through my publishing process, and this is not going to be in detail looking at any of the steps, which each call for future videos and installments of this series, but instead, I want you to see kind of in the fullness what I do as I basically publish uh, each video and the steps that I take with each of my videos, because I go through pretty much the same routine with each and every video. So it all starts with recording the video and I use a tool called ScreenFlow for that on the Mac. Now ScreenFlow allows me to, to edit and create uh, the screencast videos all in one great interface. It's a multi-track editor that I'm getting very comfortable with and it allows me to produce them very, very quickly. Once I've finished the video, I take advantage of integration that ScreenFlow has with YouTube and I publish it directly to YouTube. I'm able to open up a dialog box right here within ScreenFlow and take my finished and composed video and store it directly to YouTube. Now here, I don't spend a lot of time on the copy at this point because one of the things I do is I publish everything in HD, but I also publish it as unlisted because I don't want it to be seen until I've cleaned it up and got it all ready for prime time. So I give it a title and I'm willing to change that title once I've uploaded it. I give it a basic description and I include, I, I use a tool called Text Expander to include a, kind of a pre-baked template of a description of what Dottotech is and who I am and where to go in order to find my content. Actually, I'll just put that in right here. I'll, I just use a, a quick thing, a quick uh, keyboard shortcut called YT uh, Promo. And you see what happens is it puts in all of this information about Steve. I'm a really fun guy and here's where you go to find out information about having me speak and all that sort of stuff. So I do that on each video to make sure that I've got the proper branding and information included. <clears throat> then I say publish. Once I click on publish, it takes anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour to render the video and upload it to YouTube. While it's uploading to YouTube, I then go across and I open Photoshop Elements. I actually don't even bother using full Photoshop. I just use Photoshop Elements and I create a graphic slate or a title page for the video and I follow the same format for each one. Now here's the ones that for this particular series that I'm working on right here right now. If I we take a look, there's my publishing, uh, my YouTube publishing template, and here's my one for my normal productivity videos. Now, there's some very specific things that I do in this. First of all, I'm very color challenged, so I don't rely on the color choices myself. Depending on whatever product that I'm showcasing in my demos, I pull uh, one of the colors from their logo somewhere and I use it as the base background color. I think that's safest. Then what I do is I use a tool called Color Scheme Designer and here's a quick video that showcases this product. I use it to find a complementary color if there's not one already in the logo. So we're looking at Sanebox here. We see they just have this kind of dark blue. So I chose the dark blue and then I used, uh, I used uh, the Color Scheme Designer to help me pick a complementary color. That way I never choose ugly colors anymore and my videos tend to, or my slates, tend to look a little bit better. The other thing I do with this is I keep the text under 20% of the total surface area. Why do I do that? Because often I want to promote my videos on YouTube. I might decide to pay to promote them, not on YouTube, excuse me, on Facebook. And in order, and this is going to be the, basically the page post, the graphic that is going to be seen on Facebook. And if it's over 20% text, Facebook will reject it as an ad. So I keep it under 20%. You can see with the, with these videos here on the, uh, on the growing to hundred thousand subscribers, I'm never going to be advertising these on Facebook, so I'm not really concerned with filling filling up the uh, the, the text uh, and incorporating more text. The other thing that I will that you want to consider yourself is when these uh, graphic uh, cover pages are in YouTube, they'll often just be in thumbnail format, and nice and small. So you want to make sure that whatever text you have is going to stand out and whatever messaging you have is going to pop because people are often going to be making decisions on whether they view your video off just a tiny little thumbnail. So trying to make it look appealing in that space is something that you want to consider. Once this is done, I save this to Dropbox and uh, and it's ready to go. So as soon as the video has been uploaded, then I have the ability to add the, the, the slate to it once it's done. Then I go into YouTube and usually it's, well, usually I don't go into YouTube right away because it won't have been uploaded that quickly. But once it's been uploaded, I then go into the upload manager and I find the new video and it'll be here usually, and let's just go into this one here and pretend that this is the one that, uh, that we just uploaded and we will not see this, uh, this, um, this thumbnail here, but instead we will have the, uh, a series of, 
images from within the video that are made available to us as thumbnails. And we've all seen so many videos on YouTube with these, with bad, you know, po poses of, of videos, uh, of screen grabs from within the video. Uh, that's why I will then click on here and I will simply upload a new graphic, the new graphic to it. That's the first thing I do. I save that change. Now I mentioned that my list, my um, video is at this point unlisted. I don't list it until I finished massaging all of the data on it and massaging it and making sure it's ready to ready for you to consume. So I leave it unlisted, but I will grab this URL from the very top here and I will email that to my transcriptionist. I have a person who takes all of my videos and they transcribe it all so that I can incorporate those as closed captioning. It doesn't usually happen before it gets published because it takes a, there's a few days in between, but I get it into that process so that she knows that it's there in the queue for her. And as soon as she can, she uh, gives me the text file and then I incorporate the text file as closed captioning. And here's a link to a video where I walk through that process. I'm not going to bother doing it here, but if you're interested in seeing how I add closed captioning, it's right here in this video here that, uh, that you can click on and take a look at. Next stage is I go in and I set annotations. Annotations are so important. Annotations allow us to create interactivity within the video. And um, I talked in an earlier video about how important it is to ask for the subscription. This is where I ask for the subscription. In all of my videos, at the 30 second mark, I include a subscription button right there saying, please subscribe to my videos. There will have been one in this video here today as well. And I invite you to subscribe and I create the annotations and I go through that process. And any other links that are within the video, like the links that I've been talking about to other videos, they will all also be annotated at this point. And I add them all as annotations and links through. And we'll do a detailed video on how to accomplish this. Once this is all done, I save this and publish it, and then it's ready to go. And then basically, I will take a few minutes at this point here, and I will go through and I will work on the title. I'll try and come up with a better version of the title than the one that I kind of rushed through probably when I first published it. I will add to the description. I will fill out the description, make sure we have lots of good information there that YouTube can search on in the description. If I have access to the, uh, to the text file in the transcript, I'll upload that. And then I spend some time working on the tags and making sure that it's properly tagged so that all of the relevant information is in the tags. So again, YouTube can find it and verify that it's the sort of content uh, that somebody might be searching for and allow them to find it once it's, once that's, uh, if they are searching for it online. So then I've done all the different pieces of detail to the video. I have upgraded my cover art. I have annotated it. I have got it in process for getting the closed captioning taken care of. I have checked and made sure my SEO content is in place with a good title, a good description and good tags. And then I turn on monetization because I monetize all of my videos. That's how I make a little bit of money is I monetize my videos and that's going to run the ads. And we will do several uh, of these videos on monetization and ads and whether or not you should or should not be including ads in your videos. And then I save all of those changes. And then once I've done all of those different steps, I am ready for it to be published. Now I wait for when I want to publish it in my editorial schedule because I don't want to have like eight videos going out all at once. I want to spread them out and I'm working very hard to adhere to a regular publishing schedule of productivity video on Monday, uh, YouTube video on Tuesday, productivity video on Wednesday, YouTube video on Thursday, and then whatever I feel like on Friday. I'm thinking I'm going to be publishing five days a week. We'll see if I maintain that, that, that pace. At any rate, there's going to be two a week minimum, which are my two productivity videos. And then once that's all ready to do, I choose public as far as the settings goes. And when I choose public, I then have the ability to create a post to my subscribers. And this is going to be a, the first share that's going to be coming out and it's going to be letting people know anybody that subscribes to the video, they're going to be told, Hey, there's a new video from Dotto. That is the first YouTube steps that I take towards publishing my video. Now there are other things that I do, which follow on, which I will, I will do in the, in a subsequent video here, which is how I take the content and then I move it into my blog and into Facebook and other spaces. But I think this is enough for today. Just seeing the process and the, in the steps that I take, to get each video published and refined to the point that it's ready for public consumption. I hope you found this valuable. Please, if you're passionate about growing your YouTube channel, well then share with us. If you've got ideas or things that I'm not doing or you wanna question me on things, uh, enter those into the comments field below and, uh, and let's engage in a dialogue. I'm all about learning. You know, 
the thing about publishing on YouTube is, is there's no university to go to, to learn about it. It's we're making these things up as we go. And some of us are doing a good job and some of us are making mistakes and I'm probably doing a little bit of both. I'd love to hear your ideas and share with you and we can all increase the value of our YouTube channel together. Please subscribe to this channel right now and that way you'll hear about these videos as they come across. Plus it creates social proof that this is indeed good content and it helps me meet my goal, which is to be at 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a lofty goal. I'm not sure. I, I know I need your help to get it. So thanks so much for your time. We'll see you real soon. I'm Steve Dotto.